what it is that um what is blended learning and so that's why i decided to to go ahead and start with um just the basics of blended learning um i'm gonna go through just you know the main the basics basics what is blended learning because you know we 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 either get hired or we're at a campus where where they say oh we're a blended learning campus and we're it throws us off and then we start seeing seeing different characteristics in in classrooms that that you know we we have no idea what it is and so that is the reason why i decided to to do just going back to basics um of what is blended learning and so i am going to um admit this person first let me see so i'm gonna start sharing my screen um and give me just a second and so so i called my session blended learning 101 I, I, I thought about, you know, I went back to school. I'm, I'm currently at UTIP again. And, and I thought, you know, when we go into introduction classes, what do we see 101, right? And so um, we, I decided to call mine Blended Learning 101. I'm going to put in the chat um, a code for uh, a Jamboard. And so we are going to, we're going to do some some interaction here as well. Let me get that that link for you and let me put it in the chat for you. And I'm going to ask you to please join that Jamboard. Did everybody get that Jamboard link? Yes. And I, if I can please have everybody join that one. Okay. So we're going to start off with the Jamboard and uh, we're going to start off with that first with that first slide on the Jamboard. And I want you to think, I want you to think at, um, you know, coming back to, coming back to. Um, Ms. Rivas, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's asking us for uh, access and it said deny. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. It's okay. Let me change the. Okay, I updated the permissions. Let me see if you all can. Can you let me know if you all can go in? Are you able to, to go in now? Yes, okay, I'm seeing yes. people going in. Yes. yes. Okay, so I want you to think, you know, coming back from, because it was a very difficult year, you know, coming back um, from COVID, you know, we saw how, you know, the effects of, of our kids being on, being online you know it was it was i i know at my campus i saw you know our teachers as as we were as we were coming back to um to the classrooms you know i saw the struggles of our students as well you know we saw you know a lot of their students you know having a different even difficulty communicating with each other so i want you to start you know take a sticky in there and you know tell me here's what i know my students may what do you think your students are gonna need during this you know i know we've started already the year you know we're 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 almost done with this first semester but what do you think your students are gonna need or have needed during this t transition time or coming back face to face, you know. And so if I'm gonna give I'm gonna give us like three minutes and we can take a sticky and what is it that they need? What do they need? You know, what what do you think they need, your students need? And so I'm gonna give you three minutes if you all can just put, you know, your thoughts on there on what do you think your students are gonna need or what were they lacking? What is something that they were lacking or something that you're gonna you think, you know, this is something that I'm gonna have to target with my students. And so I'm going to give you three minutes. It's eight twelve. So at eight fifteen, um, I'm going to I'm going to bring you back to my presentation.
Okay, so let's see what we have on here. And I love those, you know, those comments that we're making here. You know, they do need that opportunity to interact with each other. You know, how many, how many of us we found that, you know, kids couldn't even talk to 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 our kid to other their peers you know um bringing them back to the rituals and their routines you know um i i remember walking into one classroom you know we saw in a third grade classroom and a student couldn't even didn't even know how, how to hold a pencil and so it was even going back to those basics of you know you know basic skills of you know let me hold my pencil you know um the rituals and routines, you know, organization skills, you know, because how many of us, you know, we saw our kids online and many of the times we had them, we had a hard time even getting them to turn on the camera. And nonetheless, you know, having them to stay right in front of, right in front of the camera to be able to teach, to teach them. And so we saw a lot of those, a lot of those, um, those interactions, a lot of those basic skills that, you know, we lose when we're face to face with with them and in on campus and so let's see what else lots of patience love and guidance and a lot of modeling exactly you know we we had to go back even you know our fifth grade teachers you know our upper grades you know modeling for them what does this look like um students need an opportunity to practice academic discourse per, exactly they needed the opportunities to interact with each other you know what when i remember when we started with the hubs you know we had kids going to the to the to the hubs and we started seeing you know they wanted they craved that you know peer interaction they craved wanting to be with their peers they wanted to be with 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 kids on their own they were excited to be in the, just in the same room with with kids and so they they were craning that interaction and even us as adults how many of us you know we, we were tired of being we were tired of being online and so i think that is one of the one of the things that we need to realize um when we are doing blended learning is that there there is that misconception of there's a, that misconception of you know um blended learning is all online and that is not that is not what blended learning is blended learning is gonna be a, a mixture of you know uh, of online and that's what we're gonna see right now it's a mixture of 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 online and face-to-face -face instruction and so um, you know, here's here's what we know about us, our students, or they may, you know, need some remediation and teaching. You know, how many of our kids that we saw, and we see this, you know, the learning gap was is huge when they came back. You know, we saw some of these kids, and we're trying to scaffold for some kids, and we're looking at, you know, we saw that we're looking at we're looking at second grade students that we need to scaffold all the way, maybe even to kindergarten. And so we we see this need of scaffolding. We see this need of remediation. We see this need of to have to reteach these students a lot, a lot of of concepts, a lot of skills. You know, even if it's the most basic skills. You know, how many of our kids are still even dealing with with some anxiety, trauma, or depression? You know, this this the pandemic. You know, having to stay at home, having to to be at home. You, you know, how many of these kids lost family members during the pandemic, you know? Um, this created a lot of anxiety with with many students, even with families, you know, the nervousness of them having to send them back to campus. And and we see some of some of this still right now. Kids are, are afraid to go back to campus. Some kids are afraid to be around other students. And we we interact in the mornings i interact with parents as they they're dropping them off and i hear the parents telling them please stay away from the the students please do not take off your mask please keep your shield on please um please stay away from make sure you're six feet away you know if people are coughing turn your face so this anxiety of having to interact again with society of having to interact again with their peers is still there you know there we hear parents saying you know my child you know we lost people with during COVID time and i don't want my child interacting with other kids that might have COVID. and so we're still dealing with that anxiety we're still dealing with that trauma you know we're still 
seeing that we need that SEL, we need to to target still that whole child in our classroom. You know, like we said, the kids were craving that connection with the peers. Um, we as adults were craving that connection with our peers. You know, having to be back. I know. I know. For me, it was it was tiring to have to be in meetings all day in Zoom meetings or in classroom, uh, uh, Google classroom meetings, meeting with students all day online. And so, you know, that connection with peers, that that interaction, that human interaction, the loss of that human interaction was difficult on, on if it was difficult on adults, it was difficult on the children. And we saw that, you know, the need to learn at least part time, you know, online is going to still have to be there because we have our programs we have those programs that are going to help us do that remediation that are going to help us do um for example i station we have imagine math so we know that we are still going to have to have that part time online learning but it's not going to have to be all day and you know we know that we're going to have to teach some of those foundational skills too to our students as well okay so let's see what this is what our our um school year looked like before and we're hoping that we can get to still see what it for it to look like that um we have face-to-face -face, uh interaction with kids we're gonna have blended learning uh or bl a blended session or blended um interaction with them where kids get to work with each other kids get to interact with each other um to work uh, on on stations, to work on different things, and then we will have some, like I said, some online, some online interaction with part of the students. So you know, it's it's interesting to see, you know, what is blended learning? What what do we see? Because as as a new teacher to blended learning, we we hear this, you know, blended learning, blended learning, blended learning, but we have no idea what blended learning is and what how can we define blended learning. So we, uh, as our campus, when we started blended learning, we had the opportunity to go with um, Horn and Steger to to a uh, session in Austin um, to to see learn more about blended learning, and this is what what their definition was. You know, it's a formal education program in which a student learns at least in part through online learning with some elements of student control over time, place, path, or pace, and at least part of the supervised brick and mortar location away from home. And the modalities along each student's learning path with a course or subject are connected to provide an integrated learning experience. And so in, you know, what blended learning is, it's a lot of us are still are doing blended learning in our in our schools because especially i think in elementary school we're very good at doing you know set, where we used to say centers right um we were differentiating for our, our centers for students and so that that is what blended learning is you know differentiating we're we're looking at um, setting a path in a place and looking at the needs of our students so we can meet those needs of our students you know, what is getting to know our students and meeting those needs. And, and right now it's, it's we're getting to see that the needs of all of our students are gonna be different because all our students had a different experience learning online. We saw students having, um, having parents support there and having them there in front of the computer. You know, we saw students, a lot of students having their computers off, their screens off. And we would tell them, please turn on, Please turn on your computers and we would see the chaos behind them where there was kids running around other kids running around or the student couldn't stay in front of the of the camera because they were off doing this or they were off doing that they did not have that support at home and so right now we're starting to look at how important it is to get to know our students to know their needs so we can um so we can place them and uh, in a path where where we're meeting those needs where we're we're scaffolding for them where we are are looking to see what what it is that we need to do as teachers to support their learning so i'm going to show you a quick video on why six reasons we love blended learning and i want you as you're you're looking at the video i want you to think about 
your classroom. And I want you to think about, you know, how how is this or how can this impact our classroom? Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the video. Um, think about think about the video and we are going to go back to our Jamboard and we're going to look at, at the reasons why we love blended learning. OK, and so let me go ahead and play this for you. Oh, it's not playing. Let me. So I'm going to share the link for you for the video. And I'm going to ask you to go ahead and please watch it on your own. It's only like a two minute video. Um, I don't know. Once I, I put it as a, as a Google, well, let me start, stop presenting this one. Uh, and let me present over here. Once I put it in my Google Meet, I don't know why it, it did not transfer my video. So, you just got a lot of technology, right? I am so, so sorry. Let me get that that link for you, and I will have you look at the video on your own. I promise it's only it's only a two minute two minute video, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss. Um, um, we'll come back and discuss what um, what we saw in the video and um, and fill out the, the fill out the fill out the that um what's it called the jam board jam board i'm sorry so here we go yes all right hey, don't you just love it when that happens <laughs> okay i just shared it with you and we'll be Yes. Okay. So let's bring us back and I'm not going to share my screen yet. Um, what did you all think about the video? What do you all think about um, what they're talking about in the video? What did you find? What are some benefits that we, we saw in this video that they talked about? You guys, you know what? Turn on your your microphones. So let's let's have some interaction. That human that human interaction, <laughs> right? Well, I one of the advantages that the students they are they are not just doing busy work. They are for, they are doing the specific needs, and then the teacher have more time on having those small groups in discussions, small group instructions. It's purposeful, right? You're you're targeting a specific. It has to be very purposeful. And I love what you said, you know, having that time to 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 work one to one. And how important is that right now? How important is that right now to work that one to one to have that one to one with students because we're seeing right we're seeing students at all levels, you know, coming back at all levels. And so it gives us that 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 um that that time. You know what else? What else did you all think about that video? What else did we see? Let me see what. This is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is Cynthia Powers. Uh, I was. I, I noticed that the children were much happier. The teacher was happier. Uh, there's a safety net built into Blended, that. Uh, that leaves room for failure without a stigma attached to it. Uh, it, it just, it was a happy video. I, I really appreciated you uh, showing us that video. You know, and, and that's, that's the idea is for us, you know, 
for us to have kids and, and you know, Ms. Osuna used to be at our campus before. And that was one thing that that something always, always when we started with blended learning, you know, kids want to come to school and have fun and, and have that interaction with their friends. And so it was it's it's about kids, you know, being happy at, at school learning. You know, back I remember way, way back when we, they used to bring on Dr. Polite. Uh, to 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 our district for trainings you know he would there was something that he always said and it stuck in my mind all this time is that he would say um a rested mind and a mind that is that is not as stressed will learn and if a child is in school and if a child is having fun and if a child is not stressed and it's not with anxiety this child is gonna learn Okay, and so that's something that has stuck with me since, and I don't, I don't know how long it's been since, since Dr. Felipe came to to our district, right, for trainings. But um, that is something that has stuck with me, with me since, since then. And and when we started with blended learning, that is something that that I noticed, as as Ms. Powers was saying, you know. Um, these kids are having fun. These kids are enjoying, you know, that interaction. You know, I'm looking at the messages, Mr. Astorga, you know, individualizing the learning for students. And, and you know, there is there is three, um, three, and I did not include it on here, but when once you're in, in once you've implemented blended learning, you start seeing that, you know, we we get really good as teachers to differentiate. So there's three levels, you know, we get really good at differentiating the instruction. Then we move into individualizing the instruction. But ultimately for blended learning, what we need to get to is to personalize their learning. You know, and what is personalizing the learning? You know, we really need to get to, to know those students and we need to get to know what is it that that child need needs but only not as a teacher not as the facilitator because as teachers in blended learning we get to be facilitators but the child needs to know what is it that what I, what is it that i need and where is it that i need to get to and so that is part of of blended learning you know keep getting the kids engaged to personalize their learning and kids start to get take ownership of their of their learning you know how many times and i know a lot of us that are that are teachers and that that have been in the classroom for so long we're so used to owning that that um owning the data and owning what our kids need but it's a lot and we've seen at our campus how much more powerful it is to share that ownership with students to share that power because kids get excited you saw it there on the video they get excited to know oh this is where i'm at and this is where i need to get to and so you'll start seeing kids coming to you and telling you oh now you need to tell me what do i need to do to get to this point and so we'll let me share my my powerpoint again and so we're gonna start looking at um at how kids are gonna start being excited you know to be in school you're gonna start seeing a whole different child in your in your in your classroom looking at you know you're gonna see how your even kid the way kids behave in the classroom um i remember you know and and like i said this is going back to basics and i'm just sharing things that our campus went through when we started with blended learning i you know we started seeing the students how different they were in the classrooms you know and it's and and sometimes it's it's difficult and we're gonna we start saying you know well we're gonna start leaving kids alone to work but how is that gonna affect the the behavior well you're gonna see something kids are there and they're gonna start behaving much better because they're having fun they are having they're being in, they're interacting with students and they're interacting at their own level many times we think you know well well why are students misbehaving but students in reality if you think about it they start misbehaving because sometimes they don't understand what what we're covering when we're doing whole class instruction and we're looking at a blanket you know instructing in you know without individualizing without personalizing some kids need that scaffold and when we don't scaffold 
you know, we're we're not we're not targeting the needs of those kids. And what are we doing? We're losing these kids. And so that's where some many times behavior problems start happening. When we started moving into blended learning, we saw, you know, behavior problems. Um, we, we stopped having behavior problems in the classroom because kids were engaged. Kids were were monitoring where they were at and we were targeting their needs. And so that is that is why we love blended learning because at our campus, because it's the engagement, it's, you know, the ownership, you know, it's helping us, you know, increase that one to one, that small group to hit those interventions. If, you know, we've seen doing doing um, walkthroughs to other campuses outside of El Paso, we saw that a lot of these campuses weren't even having um, interventions after school. Why? Because of that small group instruction, that time that teachers were having to do that in intervention during the day. And so a lot of that intervention was being done during the day. So it's, it's, inter um, it's I think blended learning is, is one of the best ways to move into to hitting those needs of those students. Um, so we like I said, there's a lot of misconceptions. I know that when we, and I know that's tiny, 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 and you probably can't see it, but there is um, a lot of misconceptions when we hear the word blended learning. You know, we think, we think, you know, oh, everything's supposed to be online. Kids are always going to be on the computer, and um, it really isn't. And I think that's that's a misconception that we had when we started, when we started through this journey. And um, and I guess that's why, in part, I was I was brought into helping with, you know, getting started with blended learning because we thought, oh, it's just going to be everything online and we need the tech part well that is not the whole thing it's just part of tiny part of it and so let's look and i know it's hard to see let me see if i can make it a little bit bigger but you know we're looking at blended learning versus um the tech rich instruction you know blended learning is students learn in part through through online learning you know some of the kids are going to have to learn online you know there are going to be some programs that are going to support you well, to to close those gaps with with um, some support of, of online you know tech rich instruction is technology students use technology to do the same work at the same place time and pace um, devices are used to leverage opportunities to personalize the learning you know and in a tech rich classroom you know devices are used to support traditional instruction so we're looking at the difference between you know in a blended learning in a blended learning classroom we're leveraging their learning to personalize their learning through the use of technology versus you know in a te tech rich classroom you know they're doing everything online and um, using uh, the uh, learning management system to be able to personalize that that learning. That's where the the technology comes in to leverage that personalization. You no know, class classrooms fundamentally shift instruction in a way that um, provides an integrated learning experience. In a tech rich instruction, you know classrooms may enhance traditional learning experience. So we're looking at the difference between you know what is blended learning and what is a tech rich instruction um, classroom and so we want to like i said we we try and we have this misconception that you know blended learning everything's online it's not blended learning is about being able to leverage that technology and being able to to um provide that learning management system to personalize the learning and learning management system like we use here in the district we have the Google Classroom, you know, how powerful can Google Classroom be um, to be able to personalize the learning for for these for these students? So, what is it that we're trying to, you know, as we're looking at blended learning, we think, well, what is it that we're trying to do? What are the skills, you know, where our students are moving into a totally different. Um, area of of what it is that they're they're being expected to to be as a whole child you know and the, looking at the whole child what are the skills and what are some attributes that that students are going to need to be able to function in a in 21st century in a 21st century um 
right now, you know, in, a, in this century. And we start thinking, I, let, I, I started to think, you know, and this is something that we've heard a lot is how many of our kids are going to have jobs that we haven't even heard about right now? You know, we're, technology is moving so fast that how many of these kids, you know, are going to have jobs that we, you and I have no idea what, what it entail, what it's going to entail. You and I have no idea what kind of technology they're going to use, what kind of skills they're going to need. And so we're going to have to start, you know, building these, these skills that we know they need right now. And so, you know, if one of the skills is effective in oral written communication. And if, um, you know, how many, how many of you, how important is this? You know, how important is it to be able to communicate? And I know we have some administrators here and I don't know if they want to chime in, you know, even as adults, how important is it to, to, to communicate, to be able to communicate effectively, even as teachers, you know, how important is that written and, and orally? Um, collaboration. And a lot of us, you know, we have to work collaboratively in, in, in our, in our campuses during PLC, especially, right? You need to be able to work collaboratively. Um, I remember when we were back, at, when I was back in the classroom, you know, being able to collaborate with, um, with our my team. There was one instance where we were working as a team, and there was a teacher that was always in there and. She would collaborate and and she would say, well, yeah, we could probably do this. But then what we collaborated, it was like up the window and they would go back to the classroom and they did their own thing. And we were like, oh, I guess that was not collaboration. Right. And so it's important to be able to collaborate and work across networks. You know, right now it's it's working, getting to know people. Right. You need to know people. You need to know you need to know people to to be able to collaborate and learn from other people through through blended learning we see how how we can have kids you know we have the technology to have kids collaborate with kids around the world we have that power and how powerful is it to be able to 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 be able to collaborate with you know learn from kids from other countries from across the world and so we we have that right now that that how many of us did not have that as kids? You know, we would have to go to the library and look at, see what it, what was going on in other parts of the country, maybe using encyclopedias, looking at books. But now we have that power, we have that technology where we can interact with kids. We interact with adults from all over the world. Um, you know, the, these kids need to be agile and they need to be able to adapt. You know, things change quickly, especially with technology, they, they change, change quickly. And we need to be able to adapt to, to different situations. Um, they need to have resilience. Resilience, how important is it to be resilient? Resilient. Um, empathy, they need to be empathetic, you know, have that global stewardship. They need to have a vision. And in, in blended learning, you know, we set it's important to be able to set those goals. So I'm going to let you all read those because I know we're running out of time and, and I want to cover something. I want to go over um, what simplifying what blended learning is. And so blended learning is actively learning with online or face-to-face -face activities using different models to give students control of time, place, pace, and or path. And so we see that blended learning has different models. Um, one of the models is, is um, rotation models. We have station rotation models. We have whole group rotation models. We have what we have flipped learning. Um, we have playlists or individual rotation. And then that's the traditional learning classroom. Then we have, we go all the way up to where we have an enriched virtual model. You know, this is where we can, we can place kids learning from with kids from other parts of the world or learning about what other kids are doing in other parts of the world. So this is this is simplified. This is blended learning simplified. You know, so then we get started. How do we get started with blended learning? I think that's the most difficult that's the most difficult part. When we started as a blended learning campus, 
you know, we thought, well, what is blended learning and where do we get started? What What is it going to look like? Well, let me tell you something. Your classroom is not going to look the same as another person's classroom. Your kids are not going are not the same kids that are another in another classroom. They're gonna they're all different. The needs in your classroom are gonna be different from other needs in other student in other teachers' classrooms. And so it's gonna have to even blended learning is gonna be personalized for you. You know what is it that you are comfortable doing? What is it that you want to do in your classroom? And what are the needs of your students in your classroom? And I think that's one of the things that you need to keep in mind. I, I agree, you know, we're going to go into classrooms doing those learning walks and, and be able to see what are other teachers doing. Learning from each other is very powerful, but then you're going to take back to your classroom and you're going to say, okay, this is what's going to work with my kids. This is what's going to work for me. And this is what I am comfortable with. You know, blended learning is a step at a time. What is it that you are, are comfortable doing and what steps are you going to take to, to be able to implement blended learning? Our year one at Isleta Elementary, this is what we started with. And I'm just sharing this because just so you can see what it is that we started with and how we started. Um, you know, the first year we were, it was a lot of data driven, you know, using data walls. What do data walls, what is the purpose of data walls? You know, it's for the students, it was taking the ownership, you know, building that student agency, building students, that engagement and wanting to learn, you know, to, to be able to drive their learning. You know, the culture, building that culture in your classroom is gonna be very, very important. Building that safe learning environment, like Ms. Powers said earlier, it's okay to fail. That's what those data walls are gonna show you and some kids are gonna be afraid for you to, for, for them to show that data up there, but it's not about, oh I'm, fa oh, I'm ashamed, look at how bad I'm doing. But we need to change that culture and we need to say, change that mindset to say, you know what, it's okay, I did not get this, but you know what, Miss um, Powers did get this. And I'm gonna go to Miss Powers and I'm gonna ask her for help. I'm gonna go to Mr. Carrillo and I'm gonna ask him, you know, he, he did great in this in this area and I did not. I need to, we need to be able, we saw those skills for 21st century uh, learners. What are the skills? They need to be able to collaborate. And this is where we're, we're teaching them to collaborate. You know, student-led conferences, students owning their learning, you know, students need to be able to, to, to show what is it, what it is that they're, that they're, that they're learning. You know, when we have parent-teacher conferences, usually who is it the one that is, that is talking, the teacher? Well, during student at conferences, you know, the students are explaining to their parents, you know, this is what we're learning and this is where I'm at, but this is where I'm going to get to and this is how I'm going to get there. The students need to know the why and the where they're going, you know, their purpose. What is their purpose and what is their goal? Differentiating instruction. That's That was our first year. Right now we're working on personalizing, but that was our, our first year we really get to differentiate that instruction for students. Building in that station rotation model using the ba balanced literacy approach. You know, we, we our big rock we, we saw was literacy across our, our campus. And so that is why we started bl implemented blended learning, especially in literacy and in reading in our ELAR. Um, and so we saw a lot of our teachers that were departmentalized and so they started, um, they said, I'm not going to stay behind. I'm going to implement blended learning in my camp and my classroom. And I'm going to do it in math. Or I'm going to do it in science. Um, setting goals for students for reading. That This is where we started since our big rock, rock was reading. But you can set goals for students, set long, short-term goals for students academically and non-academically. Using a communication tool with to communicate with parents, I think that's very important. Parents need to be kept in the loop um, on what's going on with their students. You know, keeping those digital portfolios so parents can see the growth of the students throughout, throughout the year, throughout the a week, even a week. You know, the use of adaptive software. We started at our campus doing tiered parent engagement nights, and so we would take um, student data from iStation. And we would tier our parents based on that station. And so we would, our teachers would um, target in certain um, areas for, for our tier three students that they could show parents what, how they could support um, the students at home. 
and uh, using pre-assessments. I think, you know, in blended learning, we need to know before we start, we need to know where are our students before we start our unit. Because if there's something that our students already know, why are you teaching it to them again, right? Give them that assessment and that, that assessment. You're going to have those kids that are way up here and they're very high students. And why are you going to keep them behind if you can push them forward to something that they that they can they can take advantage of and i know we're almost out of time um let me go really quick to to this last one you know i don't know i and shelly can tell me i don't know if this, this is the same ones but this is i loved this one because this is it gives you some strategies into how to hit each one of these pillars you know the data driven instruction you know what are some strategies to be able to to for data different instruction we see formative assessments we see pre and post assessments um rigor you know what what strategies can we use for rigor student agency the strategies the how to build that campus and classroom culture what does it look like what should it look like what does it mean and the competency based progression and um i don't know if there's any questions i know we have like Two minutes a minute or so to end the session any comments any questions um anything i can answer for you like i said we're all learning we're all still learning we're no experts at this we're still we keep learning and i think it changes we have to be flexible and um but i just wanted to share what it was how we started what it you know it can be it can be scary it can give us anxiety right <laughs> It can sound something that is very um, scary, but in reality, it's something that we we already do. It's just changing our mindset and changing that experience for our students to be able to hit, you know, their needs, to be able to to be able to hit hit their, their needs and be able to um, to close those learning gaps. I think that's what's the most important part right now is closing those learning gaps with our students and i think my time is about to be up and i want to thank everybody for being here um if i can if i can help you or if i can answer any questions for you like i said by no means am i an expert in this but um i we've had some experience in this and and i would be more than happy to share share what we've done at our campus with blended learning thank you